Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Katrina Sargent, Devil Doll Custom Creation. Today we're going to do a two-tone wood grain using Crystal Lock products. You can use the same technique with epoxy. You're going to first need a prepped tumbler, prepped to white, and then you're going to let that dry before you move on to inks. I like adding a thin layer of my lightest color all the way along my tumbler. It doesn't have to be pretty. This is just to get a base color and I spread it around using a chip brush. Once I have my tumbler completely covered with this first layer, I then drop lines of my color and pull from the very top rim down. I keep running my brush over that same wet alcohol ink until it is completely dry. That will give you more of the variation to your streak. And then I go back in with the next layer of your wood grain. I tend to do two to three in one line. Like I said, I'm using my chip brush and just running it along that line until your alcohol ink is dry. And then once I have that done, I go to the next direction, which is usually from the very bottom up. Let your alcohol inks kind of show you where they want to go. And then just keep pulling up your brush around those wet edges to give it more of a natural look. Sometimes when I don't want a big dollop on the tumbler, I will just wet my bristles off the side until you see it just like this. So then I use my wet bristles on those areas in small areas. It kind of gives you a little bit more control where it's going. And then I just kind of keep changing directions from the top down to the bottom up. Some a full all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. Be careful when you're adding your inks onto your tumbler. You see how that one almost rolled on me and it will change and take away color as it rolls. So if it rolls to a side that you've already done, you can ruin your wood grain and have to fix it. It's fixable, but then you have to take your time to fix it. Another way to add a good variation is to change the color. So the previous one has been butterscotch. This is caramel. It does have more of a red tint to it. So I don't use it as much for my bottom two-tone because I want my two-tone to be as light as it can be on the bottom part. So you can really see a variation off the dark wood. Then you're just gonna go around your tumbler until it is fully covered in these grain streaks. If there's a place you don't like, like right there is a little dark for me, take some alcohol on a baby wipe and wipe it clean and restart. Nothing is permanent yet. You see how this one is a lot more red tone to it? It's because I'm using caramel right here. On this first layer, I don't do the bottoms. Once you are happy with this, let it sit for 24 to 48 hours, and then you're going to seal it with clear spray paint. Do a very, very light misting the first two coats, and then get slightly heavier. You have to let it degas for 48 hours before you move on to bright tone. You're going to add a really thin layer of bright tone on this tumbler. Make sure you walk away once it is fully covered. Don't keep messing with it. You can add the next layer after four hours. You're gonna do this at least three times before you move on to the peekaboo. I will have all images linked in the description below. Once that is completely smooth and you've done a light sand and done your rim, you're gonna add your vinyl stencils. I am doing a reverse weed. My blade was slightly too deep, so my vinyl is kind of stuck to my backing, but 
but I prefer reverse weeding on the transfer sheet so much more than trying to weed it off the vinyl paper itself. You can finish weeding the rest on the tumbler itself. You're just gonna find the perfect spot that has the most variations. Lay it down and then work from the middle out. This is a curved tumbler. There's gonna be a lot of folding on your transfer sheet. It's fine, your transfer sheet is supposed to be folded up in places so you can get a flat area of your stencil onto the tumbler. Once you have that done, then you're gonna weed out the rest of your design And if you find a place where your stencil is not 100% laying flat, run your nail along it, along the edge. It can have a fold in the middle of the stencil, but it cannot have a fold on the edges because you will get paint underneath there. Here, I had to recut out my design. So I have different color vinyl. I just use scrap vinyl for my stencils because you're going to remove it anyways, it doesn't have to be the same color. Then once you have everything that you're gonna to want to be your light color peekaboo, make sure it has good contact with the tumbler, press things down, press the edges down, and then you're gonna do a one thin coat of universal white. I find that it helps starting kind of on a fresh canvas with the next colors to keep it the deep dark color let that fully dry before you move on to your dark wood grain i prefer teak wood for most of the full coverage i do add a little ginger here and there just to add a little red variation to it i'm going to do exactly how i did my other one i'm going to lay a thin coat of my main color all over the tumbler. Does not have to be pretty at this stage. Be careful you're not pulling up any of your vinyls or you have any pooling at your vinyl. And you're gonna just do exactly what you did on the light color grain. If you're finding that your brush has too much ink on it, like mine just did, and it's getting really dark, just take a baby wipe with some alcohol ink on it and clean your brush up. Just keep layering to get that textured bark look. I tend to make around my stencils the darkest. It gives it the best contrast when you remove the peekaboo I actually don't do knots or anything on the bottom. There is plenty of videos out there of people who do do that. I do wrap edges around the bottom if I have a place that needs it. But other than that, I kind of just dab the bottom because I put my label on the bottom. And once you are happy with the way your wood grain looks, I set mine off to the side for about 24 hours to dry before I weed. Use whichever weeding tools you prefer or have on hand. When you are weeding your vinyl, I tend to go to an edge and kind of work into where the vinyl is. Be careful not to dig your tool into the bottom layers too much. Your Crystalac will cover that, but since it's thinner than if you were doing an epoxy tumbler, that little scratches can sometimes take off your inks. If you find paint has went under your vinyl, I take a little bit of acetone onto a tip of a weeding tool and kind of clean it up that way. Take your time with weeding your stencils off your tumbler. If you found that you pulled up a little bit of the dark color, 
take a tiny little paintbrush with teak wood on it and dot it around that area. If it gets on your lighter color, just take a little bit of alcohol on that brush and clean it up. But don't let the alcohol land on your tumbler anywhere else. It will remove the dark wood grain. Here I accidentally scratched a little bit when I was removing my vinyl. So I am taking a little bit of alcohol on that thin paintbrush and a little bit of butterscotch just to fill in those tiny little scratches I made. And once you are happy with this, you are going to let it sit for 48 hours. And then I seal mine with three coats. First, the light dusting going heavier. And then you have to let it degas before you move on to bright tone. I actually switched it from satin to matte finish. It gave me more of a realistic wood grain, I felt, than the satin. You're going to just add a coat, walk away from it, let it turn for four hours, add another coat, go back and forth doing this until you get about three, four coats, and then you're going to light sand and do some more coats. I sand using 800 grit sandpaper. So you're just going to do a light sanding, get any imperfections you might have on there, get your bottom, get your rim. This should be the last sanding you have to do. If you have a lint or anything fall on your tumbler, re-sand it between layers. Here is my last coat of Bright Tone Matte. I prefer putting it on using my just my finger, not a brush. It's my preference. You're just going to want to add a small thin layer. I am not putting any kind of pressure down on my finger. It's basically just running along the tumbler gently. I make sure it's on the bottom edge, so I will rotate my finger over the bottom edge. Then you want to make sure it goes all the way up to your top rim all the way. After that, you walk away. If you see any major bubbles, you can blow on them to pop them if you need to. Just let it turn. It will self-level. Any micro bubbles or anything will pop theirself. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified anytime I post new content. And please, if you have any questions or concerns, write them in the comments. I also have a Facebook group you can join at facebook.com Devil Doll Community. You can connect with me, ask me questions. You can connect with other crafters, show your work, whatever you would like. Thank you.